So I would suggest that what in the 70s was recognised as pornography mm -hmm. has been applied to all aspects of life. So a food commercial is, you know, they, they puff them up and paint these things and make them so that they just look so amazing and delicious. And it's like this music, everything, everything is presented in a highly stimulating and in, engaging way to the extent that so if you're on a dating site you're just and it, it literally has no meaning anymore mm -hmm. so is it really parents or and i'm not blaming technology because it's the human behavior mm -hmm. but can they do that because of a certain thing well i'm just saying like you know if you got your teenagers that parents still have somewhat control um then yeah it's the parents or whoever's leading guiding these people teachers everybody society as a whole right but when you're getting into the adulthood of using linkedin as a dating site to me that's inappropriate totally so um i'm just saying like for me i'm more interested on the adult performance i don't know um if kids i don't work with kids um so i can't speak for them i don't you know, I can only, you know, what Ashu said is about what happens to her. But, um, you know, I'm just looking at it as, you know, LinkedIn is not a dating site. And we need to educate people to tell them that, look, this is not appropriate. And that's that, you know. And so what you're saying is like, okay, social media, what's really brought about social media is that we have a broader reach in our worlds, right? We're international global right but there are certain platforms even linkedin should be stepping up and saying okay this is not appropriate behavior being on a platform but they for whatever reason i haven't seen anything that they say hey this is whatever well i mean so, I'll, yeah i mean so you know what i mean like wherever we're playing we have to play by the rules whatever rules those are those platforms and as far as um in LinkedIn, that's they should be stepping up, but obviously they're not, and so you guys have stepped up. So I'm just saying that, uh, you know, how do we get people stop doing it? I guess if we keep talking about it, stepping up and saying, look, it's not appropriate, and telling people about it. Um, as far as children or young teenagers or whatever, somebody really needs to guide them. Mm. to you know a better behavior you know because they're so just doing what everybody else is doing and everybody they think that's cool so but it's not cool and then one day they're going to realize it's too late it's not cool and like, oh my god you know like because once you post something on the internet it's there forever mm. so you know you have to stop to think about that you do gregory yeah no it actually that leads me to another thought that I've been having throughout this conversation. So, you know, hey, some of this behavior starts when they're kids and it's incumbent upon the parents to really be in that process to understand fully what's going on. And to some degree, you know, maybe there's a hall pass for parents of earlier generations, a little bit, you know, younger than me perhaps that have gone through this and they didn't know how harmful cell phones were or how harmful the internet or some of these apps dangerous they could be. But now we know, okay, there's really, there's no excuse. And I think it comes down to A, a laziness on parents. They don't want to confront the issue. Um, there's, oh, they're playing an app. They're, they're fine. They're being quiet. I can have my conversation with my friend or I can watch my show or, or I can take care of my business, whatever that may be. And on the other end, I think from coaches, parents, teachers, and so forth, I think everyone is sort of passing the buck, if you will. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, it's almost like, you know, you see someone being assaulted on the street and uh, there's, there's 20 people there and nobody calls the police because they all think someone else is going to do it. Right. And I think some of that kind yeah. of, you know, social phenomenon is happening in this situation. Well, someone else would do it. I, yeah. I'm a parent, but the teachers will do it or the pastor will do it or the church or the you know the coach or whoever and everyone's thinking someone else oh it's the parents and everyone's kind of pointing the finger and passing the buck yeah. well, and 
yeah well see that then let me and this is could be contentious um what is the panel's view on sector education because literally people lose their shit over the idea that relationship just in terms of consent you can play with dolls with a five-year-old and explain and get ideas of that into their minds at a young age but that would be probably at the very far end of the scale of probabilities for for many um people of faith um for many fathers of daughters who have this terrible discomfort knowing how men can be and i suppose praying that nothing will happen what was your view anusia I think, uh, in my opinion, I think uh, the relationships should be very friendly, you know, daughters and fathers. So, a father should have trust in her own daughter, like what says, like, but also some of the things you now, mostly in Tunis, you can see that uh, sometimes you get diverted with kinds of influences you are around, with mostly the friends, you know, if you get some wrong uh, friend or wrong relationship. Not only friend, like maybe you have uh, involved with some guy. You know? So these are things. No, you need to share. You need to communicate. You should have the very friendly, you know, environment in in, in your house, in your household, with your parents. So you share your your problems, like you know. You so that will... from what age? Because if ten-year-olds are asking for new pictures. They have been exposed to pornography because they get a smartphone by the time they're seven because they're given their parents old devices now so how young do you think we should start teaching sex education in terms of age appropriate you know not the mechanics of sex or anything like that for young people children but if you look at so in northern europe in sweden scandinavia their approach and attitude to sex and sexual education is entirely different and they have a very different society most of which is shown by their equality sexual equality pay equality and it's also defined by their public services so someone dive in on that 